Hello again, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today, I'll be going over three ways that I paint clouds in watercolour and white gouache. These are my favourite way to paint clouds, and I really love how they turn out in watercolour paintings. All three of these techniques are fairly simple and can be used in a multitude of ways. This is a sketchbook that I'll be using in a challenge I'll be doing, which is to fill the sketchbook because I have never filled a sketchbook cover to cover. So that's my new challenge. Now I've finished the year of art challenge. So to start this first um, piece, we're going to be using Azure Blue from White Nights. <laughs> One of my all time favorite blues. This, pe this particular piece will just need one blue, a bit of water, and some tissue. So you want to start by wetting down the paper. You'll be doing this for each one of the pieces. Get a nice glossy layer of water down but don't make it too wet you'll kind of want the page to be starting to absorb the water but not be drowning you're going to scrumple your tissue paper so what i did here is i had two pieces one that i dampened slightly this damper piece will be used to lift up a little bit more color once we've got the clouds kind of formed now first things first you want to get a nice layer of your azure blue whatever blue you're using. I did a light gradient with this, adding a bit of water towards the bottom, to kind of give it a little bit of definition. This is a very vibrant blue, but this technique would also work well with pretty much any other color. If you wanted to do a more gray stormy sky, this would work really well. Next, we're going to grab our scrumpled up piece of paper, tissue paper, and start dabbing. You want to do small dabbing movements. The nice thing about clouds is there's no cloud that is the same, and they come in all shapes. So you, if it goes wrong, it's not really wrong. You can just kind of keep dabbing. So now I'm picking up the slightly damp piece of tissue, and you'll see it's lifting ever so slightly more color off the page. This is particularly good for getting nice, clean, crisp edges. With this particular style, simplest is best. So don't take too much colour off, otherwise your clouds will lose definition. A nice twist on this style would be to add a darker colour, either a blue, maybe a purple or a grey, to kind of add some definition in the clouds. I really liked how this piece turned out. Next, we're gonna go back in there and wet that page down again. Grabbing a nice rose madder lake, which is a very vibrant pink, we're gonna start with a sunset scene. This next one is a bit of a wispy cloud design. I really like this for the kind of gentle landscapes done in sunsets. This particular pattern can be mixed in with the other two designs. So I'm creating a gradient of pink and yellow to create a kind of sunset effect. Now for the clouds, I'm going to flick some Payne's Grey Bluish from Schmincke across. You'd want it to be quite opaque. And you want to do this while the page is still wet. So the watercolour does what watercolour does best and goes wild. I love this Payne's Grey Bluish colour because it is closer to an indigo. Now for the lower clouds, we're going to mix a little bit of that Payne's Grey Bluish with our pink. 
to create a light purple. Sorry, deep purple rather. Just to give the clouds a little bit of interest. As the watercolour spreads, you may need to go back in and deepen it up. But don't throw too much colour down, do it in small bits because watercolour will surprise you. This particular cloud design is great for a background cloud. These clouds, wispy little clouds, are often seen in the distance. So when you're doing a landscape piece, Pulling these clouds in the distance before you use any of the other designs is usually a good idea. It kind of adds a little bit of interest and depth to your piece. These clouds are also really fun to paint because they're so wispy and flicky. Now you'll see I'll start to add different colours between the wisps. So a little bit of that purple mixture through. Because the clouds are never going to have the same colour so bringing those blues down into the pink purple colored clouds are also going to make them flow together a bit more keeping this simple is always a good idea as few colors as possible just to stop any muddy colors now i'm just going to swatch all the colors down below So our Rose Madder Lake Deep, our Ruttle Yellow, Payne's Grey Bluish, and then that mix that creates a lovely purple. And finally, onto the last way I paint clouds. This one you walked down your page again, and we're going to create a very light gradient with Cerulean Blue and I believe Cadmium Orange. This is another sunset scene but a little bit more vibrant. You'll see I've only had the blue right at the very top of the page because I really don't want that to come too far down. If the blue and that orange mixes, it's gonna create a really lovely mud color. And here I am grabbing the orange with a bit of clean water and creating a gradient with lots of water through the middle so that the colours don't actually mix because they'll make a lovely mud colour. Now for this one you'll want to let it dry, you don't want to work onto that background while it's wet. Now. This particular cloud piece is going to be using Cerulean Blue and Rose Madder Lake combined to make a different purple colour. I like using the same blues and colours I use in my pieces in the clouds because it helps it look harmonious. To start you'll want to lay down the mid-tones I know watercolour you normally paint light to dark, but in this particular style, I'll be painting with the mid-tones first, adding some darkness and then going in with some white gouache, which is a little bit of a secret um, way to add some white in without using acrylic or anything that is not water-based like watercolour. So just adding lots of clouds and lots of different shapes. This particular one on the left, I decided it was going to have some kind of wispy bits below it. With clouds, one thing I was told by an oil painter is that you want to have them rounder at the top and kind of flat on the bottom if you're painting the kind of traditional cloud. But they're not entirely flat. They're Definitely not really straight, they've kind of got this softness along the bottom. 
and you kind of want to keep that in mind when you're painting. Watercolour with its transparency makes for a really nice medium in painting clouds, but it can be easy to make the clouds look a little bit too solid. Now we're going to start deepening up the clouds, adding some blue <laughs> in to kind of create that depth and interest in the cloud. Lots of little dabbing motions, and I'm using quite a thin round brush. I also start to water it down at this point to allow me to do a similar technique to what we did in the pink one, kind of creating wispy elements to the clouds. Lots and lots of water. This will help it blend out and keep that transparency. So here I am adding a bit more cerulean in for depth. This is just giving another angle so you can kind of see how it's looking on the page. This sketchbook is a new sketchbook for me. It's by a Japanese paper brand and it was a bit more rough textured than I'm used to, but it absorbed really nicely. Now, <laughs> here's my secret weapon when it comes to painting clouds, white gouache. White gouache will mean that any mistakes that you make, happy little accidents, are then able to be reversed. You can change it up a little bit because it's that much more opaque than watercolour. It's also a perfect medium for mixing into your watercolours to create just a little bit more solidity to your colours. these particular clouds I was thinking that the light is hitting the top of the clouds and kind of popping up from behind where, where we're looking at them. I didn't actually use a reference piece, a reference image when painting these and I really do recommend it especially for clouds that you do use a reference image um, just because it really does help knowing where the depth and where the darkness is in the clouds. It's quite easy to paint them just a little bit too flat. Now I'm going in just with white gouache. No mixing of my purple colour through. And this is just to create a little bit of a highlight and blend everything together. I've watered this white gouache down quite a bit, so it's quite transparent. Lots and lots of white gouache in this particular one, but if you prefer, you could use Bleed Proof White from PH Martins. It's actually my preferred white because it is just a little bit more icy and quite pure white. I find white gouache can be a little bit too creamy and that bring a bit of yellow into the piece. Just going to swatch it out at the bottom so I have a little record of the colours I used. I just like doing that. It's interesting to look at how they mix together later on when I've forgotten what colours I used. You'll notice that the watercolour bloomed a little bit. I think I let the page get a bit wet um, on the bottom right, but actually I really like the effect in clouds. Um, when it comes to painting clouds, it really is more about experimenting with the mediums you've got. Watercolour blooms, adding wet watercolour over the top of semi-wet and act reactivated watercolour can really be an interesting way to paint your clouds. And we're coming up to the best part of painting, and that is removing the tape and doing a little tape peel. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope that these three cloud techniques were interesting and that you use them in your own watercolour pieces. Do let me know down below which is your favourite technique for using, using watercolour to paint clouds or if you've got a different technique that you prefer and that you really like. 
I hope you enjoyed this video and thanks so much for watching. See you next time.